Hello and welcome friends. I am glad that you have made your way to watch this video. I hope to bring to you truth and the love and mercy of Christ and I pray that this video will edify you in some way. There is a giant question going around right now in the world and that question is what day is the true Sabbath day? Well, wait, hold on a second. Isn't the Sabbath on Sunday? Well, the answer, it might surprise you. The fact of the matter is that tradition has a huge part to play on why there are so many misconceptions with the Sabbath. Let's take a wonderful trip down history to figure out exactly where this change was instituted. It all started with Emperor Constantine the Great. He saw a vision of a shield in the sky and there was a cross on the shield. And God told him to go and conquer in the name of the cross. On that day, it was the Battle of Milvian Bridge. He stormed his army through the river and they were quote unquote baptized. And from there they were victorious and made their way back to Rome. Beforehand, Christianity was a very persecuted religion. They were very ostracized within the Roman society. When Constantine made his way back to Rome, he decided to make Christianity the main religion of Rome. All the old statues of gods, such as Apollos and the many other gods, were changed from the names of Greek gods into the names of apostles and disciples, such as John and Peter. Veneration for the day of the sun would also make its way into the church. And for a very long period of time, Sunday was worshipped or kept alongside Saturday. The church would continue to grow with these pagan practices alongside of Christian practices and would end up becoming what we know as the Roman Catholic Church. If we make our way into the Bible, we can also see that it was predicted that the Roman Catholic Church will come into an immense power and persecute millions of Christians and also think to change times and laws. And Daniel chapter 7 verses 7 through 8 reads, After this I saw in the night a vision. And behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and mouth speaking great things. All of these horns symbolized the sections of divided Rome. And the three horns that were plucked up by the roots was Spain, France, and England. A little horn emerging from what we take on history would be the Roman Catholic Church, who would speak great things against the Most High God. Let's go ahead and take a look in the Bible and see what it says about this great and terrible beast. And let's see if Bible prophecy predicted that it would happen. In Daniel 7, verses 21 through 25 says, As I watched, this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them, until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on the earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. After them another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and laws. The holy people will be delivered onto the hands of the beast for a time and times and the dividing of a time. After reading this, we can accurately make the claim that the only time that is a law in the Bible is the fourth commandment is the Sabbath. And the fact of the matter is that the Roman Catholic Church has persecuted millions of Christians and Jews in a 
anti-Semitical, tyrannical reign. Not just Jews, but even those who practice witchcraft. Anyone who was not conformant to their law. We know that this is incorrect because God gives us choice. And without choice, there is no real love. We can choose to love Him and do the things He wants us to do, or we can choose to deny Him and go away from His truth. But God always gives us a choice, and it is never good to force anyone to believe anything. This onslaught of persecution fulfills the prophecy in Daniel, and more accurately, the times and times and dividing of a time is speaking about 1260 years or translated from it is days meaning that one year and times two years and half a time being half of a year we know that a day symbolizes a year here by applying the principle of a day for a year found in ezekiel chapter 4 it reads and when thou has accomplished them lie again on thy right side and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of judah 40 days i have appointed thee each day for a year by applying this method we can see that it means 1260 literal years which starts at 538 a.d the start of the papal power and ends at 1798 AD where the papal power received a deadly wound or so it would seem. Napoleon's general Berthier came and delivered that wound. This time period is referred to as the Dark Ages which we know that during that time the Roman Catholic Church had persecuted millions of Christians. One such group known as the Waldenses who were massacred inside of a cave, many of them burned alive, women, men, and children. However, here's the most incredible part about everything is that the Roman Catholic Church during this time period had changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday. And they have no qualms of denying it at all. They have no shame, as a matter of fact. And this is a quote from the Converts Catechism. Question, which day is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea, AD 336, transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Well, there you have it. Their very own catechism says that they changed the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. How is it that a mere organization run by men can think to change the times and laws of God? So we have ourselves an accurate time prophecy that points to the fact that the Roman Catholic Church is the beast which is talked about in Daniel 7 verses 21 to 26. And so we see the time prophecy being fulfilled for a time and times and the dividing of a time. That would also point to the fact that they decided to change times and laws. And well, you might say to yourself, every church organization is run by men. But the fact of the matter is that the law of God was given to Moses straight from the hands of him, of God, written through with his finger on stone tablets. The Bible also tells us that all scripture is inspired by God. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The Bible is a divinely inspired book that cannot be changed. Man can never change the scriptural authority of God. And it also tells us something about God's character as well. The Bible tells us that he does not change, neither will his law change. Not one jot nor one tittle by no means shall leave by the law until heaven and earth come to pass. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I do not change.
And in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 18, it says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. And there you have it, friends. It is exactly as Daniel said it would be in Daniel chapter 7. And the fact that we have such an accurate time prophecy alludes to the testament of the Bible being true of supernatural origin beyond human and man's capabilities. The Bible being written, this prophecy being written hundreds of years before the Roman Catholic Church came into effect. As a matter of fact, hundreds of years before Jesus even came on the scene. On another note, many have heard of the Great Reformation, the Protestant Reformation, which was a break away from the Roman Catholic Church. And while many great things came about in that time, the Protestants had taken Sunday worship with them along with the Reformation. This is not to say that I know and judge the heart because only God knows and judges the heart. I believe that many people will be in heaven from very different denominations. However, the Sabbath day is Saturday and it is one of the Ten Commandments that God has called us to keep. And if we are keeping Sunday instead of Saturday, then we are serving towards a tradition of man that was instituted from the Roman Catholic Church. Well, you might say to yourself, how do we know which day the real Sabbath day is on? Well, friends, we can go to a couple areas to be able to understand which day is the Sabbath day. Most importantly, we can go into the Bible. As a matter of fact, we can go all the way to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Looking at the book of Genesis chapter 1, we see the creation story. And the word for day there is the Hebrew word yam, which refers to a 24-hour literal cycle. For as far as one can remember, the days have been in a 24-hour day cycle. However, the way that we chart that 24-hour cycle is much different than how the Jews would chart that 24-hour cycle. For example, sunset to sunset is how the Jews would keep a day. The Sabbath in itself would be Friday, sunset, onto Saturday, sunset. God had instituted it in this manner. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 5, he says, He called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now that we know how the biblical days work, we can make our way to understanding exactly which day is the Sabbath day. Well. It tells us in the very next chapter of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, it reads, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. God had instituted the sanctification of the seventh day from the very beginning of creation. Now moving on, we can continue down the stream of history to Exodus chapter 20. And it reads, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth, and the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it is expressively the commandment of God, the fourth commandment, which is the law of God set apart from the law of Moses. So we have ourselves in Genesis seeing that God instituted the seventh day and rested on that day. He sanctified that day. Later on, the Israelites are reminded of the sanctification of that day, the Sabbath day, through the law of God being written in stone. It was a reminder because they had forgotten in their time in Egypt, they had been lost. 
and they had forgotten the laws of the Lord their God. So more evidence to know that Saturday is the Sabbath day is by looking at when Jesus Christ resurrected. As most of the Protestant world may tell you, is that Jesus Christ resurrected on Sunday, the first day of the week. We know that by looking at Luke chapter 24, uh, and various other accounts in the Gospels. However, what is even more particularly interesting is the fact that Jesus Christ died on the preparation day, he rested in the tomb on Sabbath, and then he resurrected on Sunday, the first day of the week. And we can find evidence for that fact by just looking at the Bible, by looking at Luke chapter 23, verses 52 to 54. This man went on to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, this man being a man named Joseph. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. We can also observe the fact that the Jews have been keeping the Sabbath for centuries, for as long as anyone can remember and they keep the Sabbath on Saturday. There is so much circulation out there saying that Sunday is the Sabbath day, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Friends, don't believe it, it is a lie. Many people will tell you that you can keep a Sabbath whatever day that you want, and that's just not true because God sanctified one day, and that was the Sabbath day, Saturday. But wait now, you might say to yourself, now that you mention the Jews, isn't the Sabbath only for the Jews? Well, no, it's not. The Bible tells us that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Mark chapter 2 and 27, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, that he here being Jesus. The word for man here is the Greek word anthropos, which is referred to for man in general, like man as a species. The Sabbath wasn't just created for the Jews. It was instituted in creation in Genesis, and there were no Jews in that time. The Sabbath day is no longer in effect, and that means that none of the other commandments is in effect either. That means that one of us can just go and kill and rob and steal. The Bible tells us that if you fail in one, you fail in all. James chapter 2 and verse 10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Friends, it's not okay to kill someone, it's not okay to rob someone, but it's okay to defile the day of our Lord our God, the Sabbath of God. This day is the holy day in which God has decided to bring us closer to Him in order to sanctify us, in order to seal us. It is a dignifier that we are His people. Just like how God has a seal of His authority, so does the Roman Catholic Church, so does the false beast system. They claim that the seal and mark of their authority is Sunday. And they quote it in their own catechism. And it says, The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance from Saturday to Sunday is proof positive of that fact. Had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, from the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. This act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. They claim that if they had no power, they never would have been able to change the Sabbath day. However, the fact of the matter is, they never changed the Sabbath day. All they did was change what day people are congregating to. But Saturday will always be Saturday, and Sunday will always be Sunday. I want to make this very clear. I believe that there will be many people from different denominations in heaven. I am sure that there are some sincere Christians that are Catholics that will be in heaven. However, 
The problem here is with the system of the Roman Catholic Church. It chooses to blaspheme the name of God. And it has done so by thinking they can change a day of which they have no authority to do so. Now that you have heard the truth, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to search the scriptures for yourself. I want to challenge you to look into the history behind this. Because right now there is a movement in order to indoctrinate people to accept a false day of worship Sunday, which is something that has no scriptural authority. I want to urge you to accept the Sabbath day because God wants to bring you into his rest. Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden and I shall give you rest. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 and 15. And so I want to urge you to follow the voice of God, the wonderful voice of God. God loves you and he wants you to accept his truth so that he can bring you into his fold. God bless you. Whatever time you're watching this, whether it be day, night in China or somewhere else, I'm praying for you. Until next time.